Oh, you know what? Screw this. I'm gonna put Venusaur in the lead, and if there's something I don't think I can take, though, I doubt that'll really happen, because I've got a 20 level advantage on everything. But if there's something I don't think I can perform well against, then I'm just gonna switch out. And because the why, why I'm doing this is because I really believe that you need a well-balanced team in terms of levels because if someone gets ahead by a few levels then it's gonna get more tempting to use it in times of crisis so it's gonna gain even more levels compared to the others which in turn will make it even more compelling so it's a vicious cycle so to avoid that I gotta raise everything equally there's that and the fact that Venusaur, well, I consider it the weak link of my team so far since it doesn't have Sleep Powder yet. Only six more levels until Sleep Powder though, it's getting close. So yeah, without Sleep Powder, it's sort of the weak link of my team. So it's especially important that I keep leveling it so that it doesn't get to 55 and everything else is at 65. And that biker who just said raising Pokemon is a drag, well, it's not a drag. You just have to be real careful about how you do it, and you'll do just fine. Okay, now it's time for fan mail! Well, not exactly fan mail as much as fan comments in the comments section of my previous videos. First up is, well, I don't remember the names, but someone pointed out that in the, the Safari Zone, I could just keep tapping the arrows real quickly and I wouldn't spend any steps in the, the, uh, the, the Safari Zone. So why I didn't do that, just in case anyone else was wondering, is because I really don't intend on using anything that's in the Safari Zone. If I can catch something rare, well that's nice, but I didn't intend on, ca on really catching anything for use. And the reason why I went to try and catch Pokémon to begin with was because I wanted to have a little more of my money's worth. Like, if I could catch something with balls that are technically free with the Safari run, well, more power to me. As it stands, I just caught the, the common stuff. I ma didn't manage to catch anything that was rare. Okay, so that guy here was the Pepsi Max, Coffee, Red Bull, Pound of Powdered Sugar guy. And I didn't, I thought it, it, it was a new trainer, but nope with that guy. Now, I think there's only one trainer up here and an item, which is, um, I don't remember what it is, actually. Anyway, next subject. Some of you people were wondering just how a game could be rated PG. Well, keep in mind it's in Australia, and from what I've gathered from uh, Wikipedia, well, well, say what you will about Wikipedia, but I don't think people will voluntarily go and put false information about how games are rated in Australia. If there's anything to be vandalized, I think this has zero interest when it comes to vandalism. But from what I understand, it's the same organization that rates books, movies, and games in Australia, so that's how games and books can be potentially rated PG. Still, I can't believe Pokemon rated PG. It's a game marketed for little kids! And you're gonna forbid kids from playing Pokemon because of the Game Corner? What the fuck? And yeah, I know that. As I said, in Australia, ratings are usually really harsh. Some American parents would certainly like that to be the case here, but even American parents ought to know that, that, that preventing little children from playing Pokemon is overkill! And I'm saying that knowing how hard American parenting can fail. Oh yeah! Down Syndrome Wigglytuff! Yeah, what a team! Down Syndrome Wigglytuff and Pregnant Pidgeotto. This girl, I tell you, she's got great taste in Pokemon. And so do I, what with my stack of lettuce here and the horrendous Gengar back sprite this generation has. Yeah, I got great taste in Pokemon too. So, yeah, I was so cute. Please don't judge a book by its cover, okay? And here's another trainer who thinks I look cute and gentle and everything, so... I think I can win! Yeah, except in real life I'm about 15 years older than this guy there. 
But just for the sake of argument, let's pretend I'm a cute and adorable 10 year old. Okay, now there's one thing I've been requested to do lately, and that is a Pokemon Crystal LP. As I said, I don't know if I'll do it or not, but if I don't do it, it's not just down to me being lazy and everything, it's because I have a life, I have a job, and everything that comes with that! I'm an adult, believe it or not! I was alive when Never Gonna Give You Up came out first. I am old enough to have heard the song on the radio! Okay, so who is the cute little adorable 10 year old now? <laughs> no! Wrong! Yep, that's me alright. Digging up old fads no one's likely to remember and beat the dead horse some more. Yeah, you're afraid of bikers, they look ugly and mean, but if you take into consideration what you've learned today, then that means you're gonna beat them with one hand tied behind your back. Which, incidentally, is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I shouldn't complain too much about Venusaur being a sort of a dis disadvantage versus poison types, because if you remember, they can't even poison me, which is probably the main threat they pose since the power of the poison type's best move, which is Sludge, if you remember, I ranted about it at length, it's only 65, with a 30% chance of poisoning, of course. And it's regular poison, not toxic poison. Though both blow monkey chunks in this generation. Regular poisons always suck, and in this generation, whenever you switch out and you're toxic poison, for lack of a better term, well, when you send your Pokémon back in, it's regular poison all of a sudden, so... Yeah, toxic isn't that threatening, the only real use for it is in-game, and even there, not always, because it's often better to just sweep the hell out of the opposing team with, uh, with, uh... Pokemon with a 20 level advantage like I'm doing just now? No, you gotta use Toxic on Pokemon that can really stall Pokemon, other Pokemon for several turns. I used uh, Moltres and Cloyster as examples a few videos back, since they're the best users of moves like Fire, Spin, and Clam, and you know it would be really, really cheap, broken even, if Fire, Spin, and Clamp could prevent switches like they do in other generations. But fortunately, here they don't. Could you imagine Moltres being overused? <laughs> Personally, the, the, the two concepts are impossible to link in my head. Moltres has been under the radar so long, right now it's just starting to get pretty good, not nearly enough to be overused. But still, back then, Venusaur was just Fire Blast, Fire Blast, Fire Blast, oops, out of Fire Blast DP. Now, of course, Fire Blast's a pretty good move and all, but with how barren the most fire types move pools were back then, you'd think a little more PP would have helped, but that is where the lack of a flamethrower TM really, really hurt. Add to that the fact that there were no steel types to burn to death yet, because let, let's admit it, steel types would be a lot godlier than they are, and they're still really good right now, but they'd be so much better if there weren't any fires around. Imagine no Heatran, no Infernape to beat the, the hell out of those steel types, it would be great. Okay, that's enough for this double dose of Pokémon, see you next time!